We have had people reach out to us saying they're worried about you. They're, they're, they're scared that, that Buff is in a bad way. You take it for yourself. I've got nothing to hide. Right, you're looking strong. Tell me something's wrong. I told my wife a long time ago, I said, if you happen to see me and I look bad on TV, I said, start worrying. I said, but guess what? As you can see, if I'm in shape, Buff Bagwell is not hurting. Buff, I, I will be calling him when I'm done talking to you. See where his head's at. So he could be over here, you know, and yeah, I got to find out, you know, where he's at. And, you know, I, I will be looking into that. Buff, like so many people, had seen the resurrection of Jake the Snake. So he really, over this last two years, had been calling me and say, bro, can, can I come in and can I stay with you? And in my own personal house, I knew he's way too much work. He's a lot of drama. As a company, we've really been focused on helping people change their lives. So, you know, Dallas and I kind of talked about doing a show where we brought people into the accountability crib and we documented how they change their lives as we helped them. When Steve, you and I decided, okay, this is what we're gonna do, I thought, okay, this would be a great place for him to come in. Buff Bagwell's Mark Bagwell that is probably most of all wrestlers, they find their character as their self, and then they turn that up a notch. From that point on, it was Buff Bagwell. And from that point on, there was no turning back. When I think of Uncle Mark, I think of fun, I think of spontaneous, outgoing, um, confidence. And he would pick me up from daycare three days a week. I don't know how with traveling, but somewhere in there, two to three times a week, he picked me up. And I think it held him responsible. I think he wanted a family. Me and mom were his family, you know, and, and he treated me like his little girl. And then I go back as an adult and I look at the not so good times. He was released from WWF, I believe in 2001. His world as he knew it was forever gone. And I instantly saw the happiness and the spontaneousness and the willing to just push through kind of crumble. Every time I came, whether it was 10 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock at night to his house, he had a beer in his hand. Mom just said, we're gonna start loving Uncle Mark from afar. April 23rd, 2012, he had his Jeep wreck. And I walk in and I just instantly lost it. He had broken five bones in his face and he had a neck brace on. And I just remember me and mom talked on the way home. I said, what happened? And she said, addiction. And she said, that's why we loved him from afar. And I hated that. I am buff. I am the stuff. And the girls just can't get enough. I mean, are you kidding me? I've got a broke face and I'm still good looking. Look at me. Me and Dallas spoke for about 45 minutes, and he said, listen, you're the only other person besides myself that cares about Mark. And that's when we kind of developed this idea that it was going to be a rescue mission. It means a lot to me that Dallas finally said, look, bro, it's time for you to suck it up, be a man, and let's get you straight. Let's get you where people won't Marcus Alexander Bagwell back. That don't mean I'm not buff. It just means let's, let's get Marcus back. We're here. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say that's half the battle, but uh, yeah. I'm willing to argue that. <laughs> Without question, Marcus, can be the regular guy, but is also an elitist. When your face is on a Calvin One credit card, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. When you're on Alexa, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Automatically, because of being on TV, and Marcus Buff Bagwell thinks that uh, he's above everyone. You literally only open your mouth to talk that's, about Buff. You fucking walk around singing like you're Mariah Carey, motherfucker. What does my singing have to do with anything? Because I don't want to hear it. 
I didn't think Mar believed he needed to be in the house. And I think for the rest of us, we thought maybe he needed the house more than anybody. Else. Call me fat again. Get the fuck up, motherfucker. I ain't scared of you. Butter fucking me. I don't give a fuck. You, I'm right here, bro. I'm not fucking joking. I don't give a fuck. Bubs makes bad decisions. You know, sometimes with not filtering himself. I've listened to the whole thing, bro. I haven't watched the whole thing. I just watched the, like a 27 minute clip. It. But, you, but you said it. And I said, do you not have enough problems to worry about? I said, you got 267 hanging off of your rear. To me, bro, and I've known you a really long time, it's the most insensitive thing you've ever done. Because you only say shit like that when you're high. Do you think that you're an addict? Uh, no. So you're not powerless over the first drink or drug? No, look, I could, I could. You can I could drink a beer right now and not drink another beer. But for I'm talking months. about somas, opiates. I'm talking about stuff you no, opiates like. Opiates are done. Opiates are. Opiates have been done for ten years. What happens is the denial builds in the brain, and denial is a way of pushing out a whole truth about something. It only limits the brain to partial truths. Do you use now? Do you? Yeah. If you don't mind my asking, I, this is not That's judgment. Answered. Don't judgment from me here. Bro, I'm just wanting to apologizing. Fuck, just answer the question and I'll answer it, bro. You asked if I was an addict, let's stick to that. The fucking answer is no. I have this like obligation to help him. I just want to help him. And, you know, I want a team to help me help him because he's a lot to take care of. You've been sober all week. Minus the mirrors, yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Now, now that's why I wanted to play out of the video, Steve. That's why I always um the kid key. I always um, I like it. You're so yeah, right? Up, 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 up. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well you just told me you don't lie. When was that though? A couple days ago. You gotta stop telling us that you're you're good because we know you're not. Right. Take some fucking accountability, bro. Take some accountability. We're trying to fix your leg, but you're putting all of this stuff that we don't even know into your body that's probably one of the reasons why your leg won't heal. Buff's body is taking a beating from wrestling, yes. But that leg and that whole injury going down his leg, that has nothing to do with wrestling. That has to do with the car accident he was in because he was all whacked out on somas. Mark's had these open wounds for almost two years or more, and we don't know why they're not healing. It's never going to heal. I'm telling you, that's the depression though. George, you don't know because you've never been straight for fucking more than a couple of weeks. He tries to do the right thing. He wants to be known for doing the right thing. And, uh, Jake and Scott, they both gave up their license. Even though they didn't care about themselves, they could bring about other people. You don't. You think you do? but you don't, you are a taker. When you're strapped and wrapped in addiction, there's only one person you want to help, and that's your addiction. We've already set up for you to go to fucking rehab. And if you don't go, she's kicking you out and we're done. We know where you could be in a year if you listen to us. We also know if you don't listen to us, you'll probably die. We're not out of your life once you go there, but you got to go there for us to be in your life. You can do this. I, I know you can. I know you can too. It's going to be tough the first couple of weeks. But it's going to be tough. If I had not done 30 days in jail, I said, I hope I will come out of this thing. I'll say an ex. I'll be a sweet. Just to me for a second. I've already heard this story because that's what an addict does. I mean, you've told me the story. This is the third time I'll be hearing this story. You finish your mind. You couldn't sleep for the 30 days you were in there. No one believes that I didn't sleep at all, but I couldn't sleep. And then I came back, popped a couple of pills, went to the gym, got tan, boop, 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 boop. Right. Is that right? That's right. Got it down pretty much verbatim. Records. Yeah. So you don't have to tell me the story. So the bottom line is that 30 didn't work. But Mark, here's the thing. This is the whole concept of everything we've been working on, right? right. You don't believe it's going to work. It's hard. It's the hard that makes it great, though.
Focus on what you want and what you're going to change as opposed to what can't happen. Because it all comes down to belief, bro. I'll reach that. No more work. Is anything else we need to get out? Hi. Okay. So I had to go back. No, 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 he said, I'm sorry that I'm not the strength for you and you're having to be the strength for me. I remember what all he did for me and I want to give that back to him. So days are long, you know, but the years are short, right? I just keep praying that there's this light at the end of the tunnel. First of all, you look ridiculous. Oh my God! Uh, your thanks. face, and your I say ridiculous. Your color. I mean, right? Yeah. A completely different human being. Do I really? Yeah. And it was the only rehab I've really taken, taken completely 100% serious, and I'm going to get 100% out of it, you know, on this one. And I already have so far, and I'm going to continue. You're walking like a new man. What's You're the story? So good. My knees looking better. I still got some a little bit of a rocky road ahead of me on that, but with the team I got, I've got no problem with thinking that's gonna be fine. When Mark had gotten out of rehab and came right back here to the crib, we wanted to look out for him there. But it was you know, it was the team that we've got here and his niece Jana, that's the only people who believed in him. We were able to design this plan of like what his day would look like and how we would justify keeping him, you know, in this routine and, and keep him, and keep his attention on his sobriety. So he had been using drugs and alcohol for so long that I think the fact that coming out of rehab, he had so many positive things happening in his life. It was really good for him to see, wow, doing the right thing has reward. You're, you're becoming one of the great success stories in wrestling, of course, with, you know, really the whole world pulling for you. And I think a lot of people, whenever they hear that someone is trying to better themselves, they take a wait and see approach. And, and you've proved all the doubters wrong this time. What, what do you think was different this time for you, Mr. Bagwell, as opposed to the other attempts in the past? I really do think that, um, because when you say the words, like, you know, I got it, um, Man, I've been clean for 30 days. I've, I've got this. And you just don't. You don't ever have this. You don't ever got it. You're always recovering, you know? So I'm a recovering drug addict. And I have no problem with that title. I don't want to upset or hurt people that have worked so hard while I was up there to have a place for me to go and to stay sober. I mean, I like, I would be humiliated if I did that to them. Again, I'm not doing it for them, I'm doing it for both, but still it's just talking about staying sober. If, if, stay, if, if you cannot do it with a team like I've got, man, you're, you are weak. And I just, I've got a great chance at this right now. And this is the, one of the last chances I think I'll have. So I'm gonna make the most, best of it. And I'm gonna come out of this thing sober and live the best of my life great. As far as like where he was mentally, I think he was so lost in his like direction. Like yes, he was going to still like work hard and he was going to be determined to stay sober, but for what? I reached out to Scotty Riggs, my tag team partner. I got a text back from him that he um, has been living in his car for the last six or seven weeks. It just tore me up. So I texted him back and just said, hey man, just, I can fix it. You know, give me a call. Hey, buddy, what's up, man? Uh, a little bit of this, a bit of that. You know, just uh, life in general, I guess you could say. I've been living in the car for about five or six weeks now. You, lo you, lost, you lost your house? Yeah, got four cars off. He kind of just played it off like, yeah, no big deal. And I think for us, we're like, no big deal. It's like, it's a big deal. I'm like, look, man, are you kidding? You're in your car. What do you mean, you know? And you know, he's, you know, the mother passed away, and his brother owed him a bunch of money, and it was just a really bad story. And I look, man, I said, I'm a few months clean. You know, I'm in Dallas's, you know, accountability crib up here by myself. I think you should come up and visit for a couple of days, hang out with me, laugh, cut up a little bit, have people around you that care about you. Yeah, I'll definitely think about it. Don't want to take advantage of, I guess. He didn't want to do it. I, I couldn't believe it, but he didn't want to do it. He mentioned his tires were, were bald. And I go, Scotty, I'll, I'll put money on your tires, you know, 
get up here, man. You know, you gotta be kidding. You have to understand, when you're dealing with addiction, and like the only money you wanna give out is to your dealer. I didn't have much money at that time, and Mark Bagwell given any money up period in his life wasn't of norm of the last 20 years. That kind of flipped the switch in my mind, just went, okay, maybe it's supposed to happen. He knew the buttons to push, in a sense, or he remembered the buttons to push of just being relentless with his love for me, I guess is the easiest way to say it, as a brother, as a friend. Everything was coming at a thousand miles an hour. I just said, Scotty, just, just, just get here. So he got to the crib and, um, and you know, I just realized that, you know, we needed to obviously want to, this is your world and I want to make sure you understand, but yeah, yeah. I didn't, I, I thought it'd be okay to save, to help this kid. Dude, I would have you know, given him a place to live. Right, so that's, that's, and that's all we've done. When I heard it, I was proud of him. I was like, wow, he's grown. You, you did exactly, you did exactly what I wanted you to do. <laughs> without you, without you just, just being you, because right. that's, that's who you are now. Marcus is six and a half months sober. So now that Scotty has become a part of really his uh, sobriety, it became a great distraction for him to really start putting the time into helping him. We hung up and for, after a few minutes and then call right back. I'm putting money down and up. Get here, first thing tomorrow morning, go get your tires put on there. And if he hadn't done that, and be them story. Turn out you're choked up. Would anybody even know if I died tonight for any reason? And next thing the phone rings and it's Marcus. That's what got me from putting one on my chest. Nobody, I don't think, had an idea of really what the story was going to become come out of Scotty, which was you know, possibly taking his life the day I called. You know, hearing that, of course, was even more devastating for me and knowing that he was in that bad of shape, but to also kind of happy and proud that I was able to convince him to come up here and glad that he listened. If he hadn't done that, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. And I told him that the other night. And he looked at me, he goes, I'm glad you're here. And it was such sincerity that he actually said it. I was like, okay, everything's good. Everything's good. We're here to love you and to help you. We want you to be comfortable. So from this day forward, I want you to start moving toward feeling 100% comfortable for us, okay? Cool. It's a huge so, it's, it's important, bro. I have been so just against letting everybody help. But now I'm at a point almost where if I don't let somebody help, I'm going to help myself out of the picture. We're all about, you know, owning the story you tell yourself a six inch piece of real estate in between your ears, that inner voice and Scotty's voice, obviously if you're gonna kill yourself, it's not good. But a lot of times I just didn't wanna do anything because of how my mouth was, because of how my, my physical body was, my exhaustion. Didn't wanna be in public, didn't, didn't enjoy it anymore. I had money saved up to take care of my teeth. Then when my mom got ill, um, that money got spent redoing the house, making it wheelchair accessible, ramps. See, my mom became the priority. I got to look at his mouth one day and I didn't know it was that bad. It was, he literally had a, only a couple of teeth in there and they were rotted, kind of. He felt so out of place because he felt like he didn't, he didn't want the charity. And it wasn't the charity. It was like, like want to help our buddy. You got to change that story of, of the, the negativity and not worthy, man. You know, because if I didn't think you were worthy, you wouldn't be here. The really great thing about what we do is we could help rebuild Scotty with our DDPY program, but also the power cuffs. We could get him back in the gym, lifting light weight and build his body back. Getting up here and be around the right people, the right perspectives, the right attitudes. Once I started going, okay, they've accepted me for how I am right now and they want to help me get past this. And once I kind of get challenged like that, I can succeed. I can start making conscious decisions and, and um, get my mental edge back. Seeing that twinkle in his eye light up at the gym, going from there being nothing there at the gym, nothing, I could tell he didn't want to be there. He wouldn't even break a sweat hardly. To seeing him get excited about working out. In a short amount of time, I'm very surprised how my body, the muscle memory, 
It's something where I can only imagine in another six months where I'll be physically, where I'll be emotionally, where I'll be mentally. Going to the gym every day is good for both of them. And Mark's leg is finally starting to heal. And they're now starting to see, man, all of this hard work is starting to pay off. He started getting excited about his body, but he was still missing something. For, for months now, it's been almost two months, I've had no teeth. And it's just been a... Even with you guys around. It's been a lonely existence. I know we're all around each other and oh, we physically we build each other. This is a physical part nobody can build in me. I want to have that next step look of how the face looks after losing a bunch of weight and getting in better shape. Wow! Dig it. <laughs> That's the best experience ever looked. Good to see you, man. You look great. This man look different without that. <laughs> he looked like 15 years younger on the pink on the right. That's crazy. I could see that it was really starting to come together, but there was this one factor, and it had to do with his teeth. When you ain't got that smile, it's really hard. And we had a company that we had worked with, and they gave me the power to give like a full grill to one of our Positively Unstoppable Challenge people. I knew I had that card, but I knew that they were gonna have to see like they saw in Ken Dor, like a dramatic change, like work that was really put in. And they came out here. They worked out with me and him at the same time. I think for us, we know what the reward can be. We know that there's a payoff. And sometimes when people are doing all this hard work, they don't know it. Well, you know, I found it interesting you're talking about how in short periods of time, you know, you can change who you are. You know, six months, you've mm -hmm. changed your physical fitness, you've changed your mentality. I think that's one of the things that Nuvia is really good at. You know, like we, we change people's lives in 24 hours. Yeah. And it seems like you've done the work, brother. We want to give you a smile. It's my pleasure. Didn't think what happened. Again, it's, it's, it's something you always think about, you always kind of hear about, but you just never really think it's gonna happen. Kind of like this, getting in shape, you don't think it's gonna happen again, but it does. Well, I hope you're ready for an adventurous week because uh, we actually got a flight to Salt Lake tomorrow. <laughs> We're gonna get your teeth taken care of this week in 24 God. hours, you're gonna have your new smile. Thank you, dude. Thank you so much. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. Wow. Come here. Thank you. <laughs> hey, you put the work in, bro. Remember when we started, he was like, what can I do, what can I do? I said, make you the best you ever. And that's where you are right now, so. Love you, bro. Can't wait to see those team. <laughs> Thanks to us. <laughs> The story of Marcus and Scotty is really incredible. But if you want to see what Nubia did with his smile, check out right here. It's going to blow you away.